my grade 10s, in this series of videos, I'm going to be teaching you how to name chemical compounds and chemical molecules. Let's go. Now, what do I mean when I say I want you guys to be able to name chemical compounds and chemical molecules? Well, what I mean is, let's say I'm in a lab, right? And let's say I tell you, hey, go grab me the NACL. Or I wrote, write it on a piece of paper and I say, listen, I need you to grab me the NACL. You need to understand that NACL refers to the compound sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is composed of sodium ions, sodium, and chloride ions from chlorine. So what you guys need to be able to do is you need to be able to go from the chemical formula, this is also called the molecular formula, and you need to be able to tell me the chemical name, in this case sodium chloride, or for example over here, we've got aluminium oxide. So you need to be able to do that. But you also need to be able to go backwards. So if I give you the name, the chemical name, such as sodium hydroxide, you need to work backwards and give me the chemical formula. There's a lot for us to get into, so this is going to be broken up into a few sections. But the first thing you need to understand is that when I form a molecule or a compound, like in this case, you can see behind me, we have water. When we form this compound, when we form water, we have hydrogen and oxygen bonded chemically together in a fixed ratio. And that's how it works when compounds or molecules form. Elements combine together in a fixed ratio. So in water, for example, I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. And that's how it is for one molecule of water, two hydrogens, one oxygen. You can see that we have a fixed ratio. If I speak about sodium chloride, for every one sodium, I have one chlorine atom. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Before we move on to naming these things, I just want to distinguish between covalently bonded compounds and ionically bonded molecules. Compounds and molecules are often used interchangeably, the term. So what that means is we often refer to the same thing when we say compounds or molecules. There's a slight difference, though. When I speak about covalently bonded compounds, I'm speaking about a non-metal bonding with a non-metal. So, for example, carbon dioxide. Carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal. That's a covalent compound. In this series of videos, we're going to be focusing more on ionically bonded compounds, or ionically, I'm going to say ionically bonded, say ionic compounds or often referred to as molecules. And these form when a metal bonds with a non-metal. And if you learned about this in grade nine, you would have learned that metals form positive ions, which we'll get to in the next video, and non-metals form negative ions. And what do we know about positives and negatives? They attract, and that's why bonding takes place. So sodium chloride is an example of this. So there you have it, our covalent compounds up there, ionic compounds up there, but I mean, the process is very similar. Like I said, let's focus on ionic compounds. Let's go. Before we jump into the next video on how to name ionic compounds, I need you guys to take a look at the list of common elements behind me. If you haven't learned these already, you need to stop what you're doing, take these down right now, and memorize the elements and its symbol, its corresponding symbol. This is going to make naming so much easier for you, I promise. In the next video, we're going to go over cations and anions and a little bit about how naming happens. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Comment down below if you'd like more.